Rafael Ayash. I'm a peace builder, educator, and facilitator. This video is for anyone who wants to improve their online facilitation skills, whether you're a teacher, a trainer, or a team leader. In this video, I'll summarize some key tips and tools that you can use to ensure your online meetings are both effective and engaging. I also want to add that many of my tools come from the Innovative Changemaker Exchange facilitation community, of which I am a part of. Because solid preparation is key to ensuring a successful online session, today we're going to look more specifically at what to keep in mind as you prepare for your session. We're going to look, more, we're going to look briefly at how to set an agenda and activities, use tools, be mindful of equity and engagement, and how to be creative. Let's start. Online meetings can be more draining than in-person ones, so I recommend embedding a 5 to 15 minute break for every hour of your workshop. In addition, if you already had an amount of time estimated for the in-person version of your workshop, consider skimming it by 30 to 50 percent, because as I said, it's a lot more exhausting to be online in front of your screen. This doesn't mean you want to skip on the elements that are critical to your meeting, it just means being extra mindful of time as you prepare. Different people prefer to learn and engage in different ways. In the Changemaker Exchange Facilitation community, we recommend using the PEMS model, P-E-M-S, as a way to ensure that every type of learner and individual has something for them in your session. The PEMS model stands for practical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. Practical learners will want to engage in what is more concrete and tangible. So if my training is online, on online virtual facilitation that might include reviewing the technicalities of how to use Zoom or an online tool like Google Docs or giving concrete energizers that people can use. Emotional learners um, prefer to engage through human connection. So for your meeting that might include greeting people when they come in, using music during the break, the use of energizers as well as check-ins or checkouts. Mental learners enjoy deconstructing, discussing facts, reflecting, um, using models. So for example, uh, presenting a model such as this PEMS model is a way to engage mental learners. In addition, brainstormings or conversations in breakout rooms can also engage these types of learners. And lastly, spiritual learners like connecting with a bigger picture. So this might include reflecting on the goals of the workshop, zooming out to see the bigger picture, connecting with their personal purpose or the purpose of the general project, which can also be done, for example, through check-ins or checkouts. So as you create and review your agenda, do make sure you have a balance of activities that fit the needs of each engagement style. Of course, this model is not meant to box people. People are much too complex to be boxed into such firm categories. However, the model can be used as an effective guideline to ensure diversity of engagement styles for a diversity of humans. Once you have your agenda, share it with the participants in advance. Let them know if anything will be needed on their side to prepare, for example, having paper or markers, or even simply water to stay hydrated during the session. If you want to encourage participants to use their camera during your online session, it's very important to let them know of this in advance as well. If the workshop lasts for several days and connection between the participants is important, I recommend getting the conversation started in advance of your session by inviting participants to introduce themselves either via email, on a shared document, or through a designated WhatsApp thread, whatever your chosen platform. As you prepare for your online session, prepare to use online tools that facilitate online learning, collaboration, and engagement. Many tools exist. You can use online polls, do online brainstorming, the list goes on. But something as simple as a shared Google document can be a very effective tool to organize the session and capture the outcomes and the knowledge from the session. For example, a shared Google document can contain the flow of the session, the key objectives, all the links you'll be using throughout the workshop, as well as additional resources, such as participant bios. The shared document can also be used for collaboration. 
For example, if you decide to break the participants into breakout rooms, a table on the shared document can be used so that each breakout room can type in the key outcomes of their session. And it's really neat because as they fill it in, they also see the other sessions that are happening in parallel and the key outcomes as well, live. It's a really, really neat function and tool and so simple to, to implement. Whatever tools you prepare, make sure all the links are ready for you to copy and paste them in the chat box during your online session. I'm putting equity and engagement together in the same section because issues of power, privilege, and also culture have an impact on participants' ability and willingness to engage. Part of being an effective online facilitator is ensuring space is made available for all to participate and contribute. Depending on the culture and context, airtime may be dominated by some. For example, white, male, Western, it really depends on the context. Having an explicit conversation at the beginning of your online session about how you want to make sure everyone has equal time to share can set the right tone to make sure the conversations are not dominated by some. In addition, how it's important to keep in mind that while having online events certainly equalizes access to meetings, events. These are subject to a participant's strong Wi-Fi connection. So for example, while having video on during an online session certainly enhances engagement, it's important to be flexible about this. For example, some participants just may not have strong enough Wi-Fi connection to ensure video participation. Some might live um, with others and not have private space. And some participants may be embarrassed or just not comfortable sharing their home or background. For this reason, while having the camera on is generally best, it's important to be aware of the sensitivities and inequities that this could highlight. Wi-Fi also affects participants' ability to jump quickly into a breakout room or back into plenary. This can take up to two minutes for slow Wi-Fi connections. So it's really important to inform participants that before they start their breakout sessions and the discussions, to wait up to two minutes for everyone to arrive. And same in the plenary, to also, as you as a session leader, to wait up to two minutes before you start your plenary session again. Just because your session is online doesn't mean you can't get creative. Use the tools at your disposal to creatively increase engagement. For example, most online meeting platforms have the change name function. Have participants change their name to add their location, perhaps a nickname, or even check the energy in the room by having participants type it in in front of their name. Be flexible with your energizers as well. Have participants getting out of their seat, give them challenges that have them moving throughout the space around them. Also, don't feel you have to limit yourself to the computer. If participants have smartphones, which many do these days, consider embedding activities that have the participants walking around or even outside. In other words, don't let yourself be limited. Be experimental with the tools at your disposal, and once you discover a great activity, make sure to let the rest of us know. In summary, today we reviewed some tips and tricks to make sure that your next online meetings are effective and engaging. I hope it was useful. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any other questions, and I'm wishing you a wonderful online session.